Big Quanchi here. Today I want to review one of my favorite indie games to come out in the last year, Terror of Hemosaurus. It was initially released on October 17th, 2022 and is available on main consoles such as Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch, as well as PC such as on Steam, which was the version I played. Terror of Hemosaurus is an arcade-style destructive smash em up game which is clearly inspired by the Rampage series which is also inspired by giant monsters or kaiju movies, such as Godzilla. This game was developed by Lauren Lemke, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And looking at the credits, besides some assets such as music and also marketing, this appears to be a one-man project, but also feel free to post any corrections in the comments below. Knowing that makes this game even more impressive. Before I go on with my review of the game, I wanted to mention that this game also supports a four-player co-op mode. Unfortunately, I myself haven't had any chance to experience the multiplayer aspect of this game, so although I can't comment on it from experience, I think it's definitely awesome to have it included. So moving on with the main game, there's the story mode and the endless mode. The story mode is divided into three chapters. As you progress, the game introduces mechanics and goals, such as destroying buildings and killing civilians, to kicking giant stone globes and using ultimate attacks. The game does a great job introducing these new mechanics as well as new threats, such as members of police and SWAT. I think the story for Terror of the Hemosaurus can be pretty fun and satirical. One of the main themes is about climate change and the struggles of humanity to do something about it or ignore it and complain that it's not a problem. Although it feels like the main story beats are about this cult that has a goal of spreading destructions to make people care more about the environment. The game also presents the story through minor cutscenes, which have some tongue-in-cheek comedy to it. The story begins with a debate about climate change. Unknowingly, in the background, there's a Hemosaurus who gets defrosted from a giant iceberg and eventually finds itself with the Cult of the Lizard, who guides them through their mission to cause destruction. It's also worth mentioning that there's four monsters to choose from. The Hemosaurus, Cloxoth, Salamandra, and Autonomous Hemosaurus which is basically like Mechagodzilla. Although all monsters can be played in the story mode, it seems like it revolves more around the Hemosaurus. I think it's a little shame because it would have been cool to have details change and tailored to each monster, like for example the name of the cult. However, it seems like it's always going to be the cult of the lizard, even if playing as the giant sloth. When it comes to the gameplay, the inspiration from the Rampage series is absolutely clear. But it's not just a rehash of a classic established series, Terror of Hemosaurus feels more modern such as being more faster paced. The gameplay is pretty much what you would expect from a giant monster destruction game, such as climbing on buildings and punching them until they crumble down. Some other mechanics include eating people for health, kicking cars to cause even more damage and chaos, to unleashing ultimate attacks which are unique to each monster. Causing so much destruction and chaos becomes so satisfying. When causing damage to these tall buildings, they can topple over to the left or the right, smashing other buildings and having these moments of crazy collateral damage. Unlike the classic Rampage games where buildings would just crumble down when enough damage is done, destroying buildings in Terror of Hemosaurus is more unique and it feels a lot more fun. Making progress throughout the story is pretty straightforward, usually causing a certain amount of damage and killing enough civilians. Near the end, a game death throwing police and SWAT teams would cause a lot more of a threat, though it's not always just a walk in the park. The length of the game's main story mode is only just a few hours, but considering the endless mode and the fun gameplay, this title does have a lot of replayability. Now, I want to move on more to the criticisms I have of this game. To be honest, I don't really have much negative things to say about Terra of Hemosaurus, and these are mostly constructive critiques. With this game being practically developed by one person, I think that's extremely impressive and I feel like I can't judge its shortcoming too much. So next, I want to talk about the graphics. I've been hearing this criticism come up regarding a trend on indie games relying so much on a retro pixel style, with Terror the Humor Stories does have. I personally enjoy these kinds of visuals and wish this preconception wouldn't be such a barrier because this game is a ton of fun. Although one criticism I have is that the stages and backgrounds do lack some variety and it feels like a lot of stuff is recycled. When I was playing the Endless Mode, one stage said the location was Alaska, but I didn't even feel like Alaska at all. Also, while I really enjoy the game's music, 
it also feels like it somewhat lacked variety as well. Still considering the small developer, the visuals and musics are great, but when playing the game for an hour or two, it can become a bit repetitive. Speaking of hours, the game's main story can be cleared in a few hours, but with the game's arcade-style gameplay and endless mode, there's definitely a lot of replayability to it. Another criticism I've seen is about the game's story being a little too political, with subject matters such as climate change. I find that funny because early Godzilla movies, which can be considered inspiration for this game, did provide commentary on nuclear warfare. I feel like Terror of Humasaurus isn't very preachy, and these are minor story beats. I find it strange to see some people be so nitpicky about it. Also with the game's story, there were some meta-human moments about game development, which I also found entertaining too. A side note that I wanted to discuss is about the game's mature rating, which notes its blood and violence. With the game's visuals being a retro pixel style, I don't see this game being very graphic or too violent. Researching online, I did double check that the Rampage games that were released on the Nintendo 64 did actually receive a team rating, and I would even consider those games to be a lot more graphic than Terror of the Humasaurus, but not by much. Besides that, there is a little bit of strong language used in the game's story cutscenes, and if that's something that pushed it into a higher age rating, I think that's a little unfortunate. Not that I think that there shouldn't be any swear words, but I feel like it doesn't add much to the game and it may create a barrier for younger audiences to play this game. I don't know how much people care about age rating in games these days, especially if the game isn't too violent, gory, or explicit. I have seen online comments asking where they should let the kids play this game. I personally think this game is fine for a younger or teen audience to play and feels like a teen rating is a little bit more appropriate for the title. Going back to the gameplay, some of my complaints are that some aspects, like punching and even ultimate attacks, feel a little weak. A good thing is that in the endless mode, you can edit options such as stronger punches, which is a lot more satisfying. I wish the game would add some things like power-ups to cause even more destruction. While the endless mode acts more like a sandbox style gameplay with playing around with different options and that can be a fun way to mix things up. I just wish the main story would have just a little bit more oomph to it. A complaint that I've heard is that the game's difficulty can be a bit too easy. I do admit that typically these objectives are simple and you can easily regain health, but I had moments where if I wasn't careful I was suddenly overcome by enemies and died. One last criticism I have for this game is that it's only limited to 4 playable monsters. I think it would be cool to have a little more variety with playable characters, especially since you do differ with different unique ultimate attacks. I have also seen comments online wanting this as well and even asking for DLC. I would say that it would be cool to have a little bit more to it, but considering this game to be pretty much from a solo developer, there is a good amount of content that we get. So in conclusion, Terror of Humasaurus is a very fun arcade style destruction game that I highly recommend. Although it's clearly inspired by the Rampage series of games, I feel like it takes it to the next level with quicker and more satisfying gameplay. The story does have fun moments to it, but it can be a bit short. Even though the game does have a good amount of content and replayability, which is definitely one of its greatest strengths, there's somewhat a lack of variety such as playable monsters and scenery. While I do personally enjoy the pixel graphics and find them to be charming, some things I would like to see in a possible sequel or follow-up is to improve the graphics as well as add more to the game such as new mechanics and monsters and such. I think it would be really cool to see the series evolve and grow more and more over time. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Terror of Humasaurus. Also consider subscribing and giving this video a like and let me know what you'd like to see more on the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day!